All right, Derbyites. Uh, I'm Paul Sheehan, executive editor of Gold Derby. I've got Daniel Montgomery, one of our senior editors here, who did the, uh, one of the absolute best predicting last year's Oscars. He got 23 out of 24 categories. But we're both going to learn from one of our forum posters, Jacob Sarkissian, who's got some really interesting ideas about how to predict the Oscars, and particularly Best Picture. So Jacob, I mean, you've written about this extensively, and we're going to publish it over a series of posts because it's so expansive. But what, what's your main idea? What's your main, the main theme of what well, you've been writing? Um, a lot of these videos, a lot of sites try and go for things like, oh, The Revenant won't win because Inuritu won last year, and things like that. So I tried to make it a bit more scientific, uh, scientific or mathematical. So to give it a bit more uh, credence, I'm not sure it's worked, but we'll see. We'll see. And and so when you've you've gone through this and you've crunched the numbers and and I know we've been having you update it because you actually had this theory prior to any guilds chiming in. And so yeah. what, do, what do you what are you predicting is going to win Best Picture? Uh, the Big Short. Yeah, the Big Short. Yeah. Okay. I, I I completed this article before the PGAs. Okay. So yeah, it's a while back now. Now, Daniel, you love the Big Short, and you were actually at the PGAs. Uh, so, are you predicting the Big Short's going to win at the Oscars? Um, I am. As soon as it won the PGA award, uh, which I wasn't expecting at the time, um, I, I uh, switched my prediction to the Big Short, uh, and I've kept it there ever since. Okay. Now you're saying when it won the PGA note. But Jacob, you said you had this notion before. So what, take us through why you were already that confident Big Short was going to win prior to the PGA. Well, I, I came up with this, this sort of idea where, because we all talk about these Oscar precursors and how you need to do well at certain events um, to do well at the Oscars. So I compiled this list of 35 things that you need to do. These were awards and uh, these were winners and nominations. And then I just went along with each film nominated this year, that's eight of them, um, and ticked off how many they got. And the big short came up uh, top with, it was 18 before the PGAs, I think, that it got out of 35, which is the most out of the eight films nominated. I think The Revenant had 17 and Spotlight had 16 at that time. So I just went, okay, big short's got the most possibly ticked, let's go with that. And it's, it's just about getting me there, but now the Big Short and Revenant now equal, actually, because uh -oh. of um, Inurita's um, uh, DGA win, so yeah. Now, with, with the DGA, were you predicting Inuritu or, or McKay? Were you, no. you were... I, had, I had George Miller, but then I changed it at the last minute to Adam McKay. Okay, and... But neither yeah. one, so... Yeah. yeah, no, and I was on the Ridley Scott... I, I, I don't think it was even a bandwagon because I think I might have been the only person on it. So I don't know what that. That's just that's just sad. Uh, but Daniel, Daniel was. Uh, we, I was giving a shout out to Gold Derby founder Tom O'Neill for predicting Inaritu and being the only yeah. expert. And Daniel reminded me that uh, he had predicted Inaritu as well. So just uh, take us through that, though, Daniel. I know this, and and what does it mean for the Oscars? Inaritu winning DGA. Um, I think Inaritu winning DGA is good news for the Revenant. The Oscars. I don't think it's going to win Best Picture, but I'm not going to rule it out. It's definitely possible. I think it's better news for Inaritu himself to, for winning Best Director potentially than it is for uh, the film to win Best Picture. Um, you know, it's interesting. I really feel like if if George Miller or or Inyaritu had won Best Director and Inyaritu did, it would really tell us a lot about Best Director. Uh, but I don't think it was would have told us much about Best Picture unless it had been something like Adam McKay or or Tom McCarthy. Then we would have seen, oh, that's probably your Best Picture right there. Uh, so so I'm not. It hasn't really changed my Best Picture predictions. But it's made me feel a little bit better about predicting Inyaritu for for Best Director at the Oscars. And Jacob, with your uh, number crunching, did you go back and sort of apply it to last year? Like, did did it? Did you test the model against like Birdman versus Boyhood? Yeah, I'm I'm actually in the process of doing that with uh, with three uh, rivalries at the Oscars. One is Boyhood, Birdman. That's my first one I'm going to do. The others is. Um, Avatar and the Hurt Locker is okay. the other one. Yeah, so I'm going to see how close the runner-up got, 
and then see if that can parallel with this year because there's not only one runner up this year really it's, it's sort of two runners up because it's between three films as everyone is saying so yeah, yeah. Right, which is it, now what is interesting is is Mad Max. You know that that even now I think our our odds are predicting George Miller is going to win Best Director, but in terms of Mad Max and Best Picture, even though it's got those all those technical nominations and probable wins, it's interesting that it's just not been considered a four way race. Uh, yeah, yeah, and, absolutely. And 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 how did Mad Max do when you were toting up all the precursors? Um, I've got the chart in front of me now, actually. It got nine, and that's, t to this date, it got nine boxes out of 35, which is the, it's the second last out of all eight films. Oh. Only Brooklyn got less, so, so I was very surprised at that. Even, you know, The Martian Room got more than, than, than Mad Max. So then, with your system, and boy, I wish I'd had it prior to the <laughs> nominations, um, Room getting nominated for Best Picture probably wasn't a big shock to you that it was to so many of us. No, it wasn't, and it was a happy shock as well because I love that film. I think it's a great film. Uh -huh. Yeah, I didn't predict Lenny Abrahamson to get director though. That that came out of nowhere for me. Yeah, but I don't, Daniel, I don't think Lenny Abrahamson predicted himself to get <laughs> director. So I don't think you have to feel too bad about that. Yeah. Um, so uh, you know, you're a student. I know you're studying uh, journalism and, and film. You're uh, a, a burgeoning screenwriter. Uh, just, uh, I'm always fascinated by sort of young people. How, how did you get sort of uh, so interested and involved in the Oscars? Was it just... Um, it was when Colin Firth won his Oscar for, for the King's Speech. And it was, that was sort of the big Oscar film that I'd first paid attention to. And that was my first Oscars, which must have seem ridiculous to you guys who have been around longer than I have, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, then, oh, yeah, yeah we, we, I remember the... when King George gave that speech. That <laughs> <right>. yeah. <laughs> so. yeah, so uh, since that year, um, just skyrocketed into where I am today, luckily. Yeah, and I, it'd be really interesting, actually, I know you said you're going to write about uh, Hurt Locker, uh, Avatar, and uh, Birdman Boyhood. But boy, yeah. there's another instance, King Speech versus uh, Social Network, Social right, Network. Daniel? Yeah. I mean, we're, <laughs> if you can remember that far back, Daniel, which, of course, is just yesterday for us old-timers, uh, where were you on that prior to PGA, prior to uh, King Speech winning there? Were you uh, expecting Social Network to win? That was me or Jacob? Yeah, da Daniel. Yeah. Oh, um, I, yeah. I don't know what I thought. I think I just sort of assumed that the the social network would just keep going, um, but then like when it lost PGA and then it just that that sweep of of the uh, the guilds that just it just knocked the social network right off the map. And there were still people who were thinking, oh well, David Fincher can still pull out Best Director, and I'm like, no, he won't. <laughs> <laughs> And and I guess what's interesting in Hurt Locker being the first year of it, and it's something I talk about incessantly and drone on about, is this preferential ballot for Best Picture. I think what you've been doing, Jacob, makes is so important in this new world where it's all about the ranking. And I, do you think that doing all of this precur looking at all these precursors, gives you a sense of where the films, their relative strengths and weaknesses to each other? Is that it? Um, I think so. When I do my thing about Boyhood and Birdman, I think that will give me a more um, informed answer. But at the moment, yeah, I, I definitely do think so. I mean, if The Martian did a bit better, not then it's not that far behind at all, really. But since missing Ridley Scott's nomination at the Oscars for the director, it tailed off. But The Martian has 15 boxes ticked. It's only five behind The Revenant and The Big Short, but yeah. It's not in the conversation at all. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, you're, you're living in, you're English, you're living in London. Uh, this is, we're talking on Monday afternoon about this. i got to ask you about the BAFTAs. So yes. uh, you, you don't have this system in place for the BAFTAs, but, uh, but you're British, so you must know. Who's, gonna, <laughs> yeah, who's, who's going to, what do you think is going to do well at the BAFTAs? Which film? I've got Carol to win Best Picture, which... Might be a bit left field, but yeah, I've got Carol. Um, okay, you have I, to. Exp you have to. I can't. I, you have to explain that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, 
I've, I've done this a bit more research about what sort of films BAFTA likes. And in, the, in their previous 10 best films, uh, their 10 best picture winning films, each of them have had, or no, 9 out of 10 of them have had two or more acting nominations. Okay. The only one to not do that is The Hurt Locker, which had one. Um, and if you look at the five films this year nominated, the only film out of those five to have two nominations in, in the acting categories is Carol. So I do think it could continue that, that reign. And also, Carol's sort of the odd one out. It was the only female orientated film of the five. It's about two, two people of the same sex having a love affair and being denied that. And in this time of diversity, where it's becoming more and more important, I think maybe BAFTA would like to award a film that stands out a bit more from the crowd than the other four, perhaps. That's my uh, two pence, anyway. Oh, okay. And what about Daniel? Do you? I, I'm putting you on the spot here uh, about BAFTA. Where, uh, what are you predicting is going to win? It's so weird because BAFTA went such a different way than we were expecting. Um, and so, you know, I mean, Spotlight didn't get a director nomination. Uh, Mad Max is off the map. So there's so much there that I'm not sure about. But sort of by default, I've got The Revenant winning because it has so much support, it has the director nomination, it just won the DGA, so it has industry support, and this is another industry group. Um, but I, I think it's going to be that or Big Short. I have Carol ranked a third, but uh, but I, I think it's going to be Revenant or Big Short. No, Jacob, and I, as the, the lone Brit here, do you think Big Short is too American to appeal to BAFTA voters? That is, I was thinking about that the other day, it's a good point. Um, I don't actually, because if you look at some of the past films, Boyhood last year, it's mm -hmm. a very American film. Uh, so's Argo, again a very American film. So I don't think that comes into play. I mean, you've got Christian Bale there, who's a great British actor. So there's some support there um, for, the, for the British people, yeah. And and I guess in terms of the Revenant, because uh, uh, Tom Hardy is not nominated at BAFTA, is he? Tom Hardy? No. no. No, I didn't think so. I remember that 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 made the Oscar nomination even more surprising. Yeah. Uh, does that give you pause then in terms of the Revenant, the fact that Hardy, a Brit, couldn't get nominated? It, it does actually, because um, it's been a great year for Tom Hardy, and at loads of our uh, film critics uh, awards, he's been popping up everywhere. I mean, Tom Hardy's been nominated quite a few times for Legend, the Cray Twin film. So I thought that might prepare him to get a nomination uh, for the Revenant of BAFTAs. And if he couldn't get it there, in his home country, I just, is, is the Revenant that strong? It feels like more of an Academy film to me than, than a BAFTA film. Do you think, but now, I wonder if there's any sense of, ooh, if you're a BAFTA voter, well, we did get it wrong last year because we went all in on Boyhood. Uh, we talk about Oscar IOUs. I mean, Inaritu, I guess, is holding a pretty big BAFTA IOU. Uh, so you, you won't be. Will you be shocked if Revenant wins? No, no, oh, no, 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 definitely not. I would. I mean, on a scale of one to ten, ten being I'm confident Carol will win, and one being I've got no clue whatsoever. I'm about a one point five. Oh, okay. <laughs> it, it's not a confident prediction. It's just my 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 instinct telling me. Okay. But the Revenant could very easily win, yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's going to... And, and then what about on the acting awards? Uh, do, do you, again, I'm putting you on the spot to talk about this, but do, who are you predicting? Well, DiCaprio and, um, and um, Brie Larson for, for Room and uh, the Revenant, of course. And then in supporting actor, because, of course, uh, Sly Stallone's not there, I've got Idris Elba after his SAG win. But I did have Mark Rydams before that. But I think, I think awards groups are trying to make a point now. Um, so I think they will reward Idris Elba like SAG did. Do you think that his outspokenness in England about diversity could hurt him, though? I mean, he was kind of calling people to task on the issue just a few during yeah. voting. I do think it could help him. I think maybe oh. they would they would say, oh, actually, no, hang on, let's prove you wrong, let's give you this win, and then we'll say, look, we are very Dovehurst, that sort of thing. But it could go either way. And who are you predicting, Daniel? Um, I've got DiCaprio for Best Actor. Um, I've got Brie Larson for Best Actress, but I'm sort of worried about Alicia Vikander. I yeah. mean, Chris Beecham 
uh, has, has this theory that you know she's nominated in lead here, and they don't like Room as quite as much as the American Academy did, so they might just give it to Alicia Vikander uh, uh, because they don't always match the Oscars in the acting races. Uh, so you know he, he mentions the year uh, Jennifer Lawrence lost for Silver Linings Playbook at BAFTA, and even though she was well on her way to the Oscar. So, so I'm, I'm a little bit wary about Alicia Vikander there. And then I've got, for supporting actor, I've got Mark Rylance, but I do think that's gonna that's like a really close three-way race with Elba and Bale. Um, and then supporting actress, I think, you know, Rooney Mara, the best thing that happened to her was Alicia Vikander getting pushed to lead. So, so I'm, And they like Carol a lot at Baptist, so I'm going with uh, Rooney Mara for, for supporting actress. But again, that... That could go to Alicia Vikander for Ex Machina, or it could even go to Kate Winslet for Steve Jobs. So those supporting categories and even Best Actress, I'm not fully confident in it. Yeah, okay. Well, I, well, I, I, I haven't decided which of yours I'm going to steal, but it'll be some, uh, probably an amalgam of both. Um, well, listen, Jacob, uh, you know, we're going to get this, uh, these, uh, this very expansive article of yours posted, but we, we definitely need to check back in with you prior to the Oscars to see how your... Uh, if your predictions are changing at all based on how uh, you, you know the Big Short and Spotlight yeah. are going to do at BAFTA as well as at the the rest of the precursors, uh, but uh, no, thank you, thank you for sharing uh, your insights with us, and uh, we're looking forward to yeah, you're writing about BAFTA and and uh, as well as looking back at a couple of those sort of what we thought were maybe too close to call races, and you can tell us. <laughs> oh, so obvious that... Uh, yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. So obvious. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much for, for having me. Thank you.